the U.S. rightly fears the aftermath of a regime implosion or overthrow in the rest of Syria, the, the amount that Assad controls, um, because there could be sectarian cleansing. And the fact of the matter is that Assad does uh, fight terrorists. He also fights <laughs> and destroys innocent civilians. Uh, but the closest we're going to get to anything resembling peace is going to be an unofficial dividing of Syria, where Assad controls what he currently controls, um, and then there's different lines of ceasefire. So uh, it is in the interests of the United States um, not to pursue a regime change war or effort against Assad, even though uh, we can honestly say we wish he was gone, um, and hopefully that day will come. Uh, but it's not worth prolonging the conflict and increasing the cost for everyone uh, by actually overthrowing Assad. So the difference is, is that the United States has learned from Iraq um, and what Assad is trying to do with holding this fake presidential election is sh give an indication that he has a certain level of popular support that won't go away. Uh, so I don't think Assad thinks he can trick the world into believing that this election is legitimate. He's too smart for that. But what he does hope to achieve is give the idea through victorious celebrations in the aftermath of that rigged election that he has enough support that the idea of overthrowing him uh, becomes something that cannot be pursued, that he has too much support uh, for anyone to actually pursue a regime change objective. Most U.S. officials and experts believe that Assad makes things worse. Um, but the worst scenario is him being overthrown, and then you have ISIS com coming in and al-Qaeda coming in and, and sectarian cleansing on potentially a level that's far worse than anything we've seen in the Syrian civil war. Uh, so Assad is not seen as a solution or as an asset. Uh, he's just seen as uh, the least terrible option um, in terms of who will govern at least that part of Syria. Um, so th there are some who argue that Assad is some type of genuinely secular or relatively progressive force in the Middle East. Uh, that's another reason for this fake presidential election that Assad is going to hold. The first woman um, female presidential candidate ever is taking part in that elect in that so-called election. So you can expect Assad to say, look at how liberal we are. Would you ever see a female presidential candidate in a Syria that's run by my Sunni adversaries? Um, and that's really one of the myths that keeps his power going. The idea that he is somehow progressive, he is somehow um, a force for counterterrorism, even if he's a human rights violator. Uh, but these are all myths that are perpetrated by the propaganda machine of Assad and Putin. Um, the U.S. interest is mainly one related to counterterrorism, primarily focused on ISIS and, to a lesser degree, the al-Qaeda-linked branch in Syria. There's actually a few of them. Um, and, and then I would say on the, the third main objective in terms of counterterrorism is undermining the Iranian regime's proxies and the Iranian regime's presence in Syria, uh, which threatens Israel and the regional interests of the United States. Yes, uh, we should expect a few different changes from the Biden administration uh, in Syria. No, nothing hugely different, but there will be some significant differences. So the, the first big difference that's going to come with the Biden administration will be the approach towards Turkey. Uh, Biden has uh, basically said that he wished Erdogan would be overthrown um, and he recognized the uh, Armenian genocide the other day, signaling a tougher approach towards Turkey. Uh, so we should expect um, that issue um, to be heightened. Uh, likely, you're going to see more support to the Kurds in Syria, which in my view is a good thing. Um, the Iranian presence will be challenged, uh, but might also be enriched because the US is likely to re-enter the nuclear deal and U.S. tensions with Russia are likely to be increased uh, because Biden is tougher on Russia. So to summarize, um, you're likely to see a tougher approach towards Turkey and Russia and a less tough approach towards Iran. It's going to be very different under the Biden administration in regards to the Kurdish presence. 
in Syria. I don't think that you'll see anything like Biden endorsing Kurdish independence, either in Iraq or in uh, northern Syria. Uh, I don't anticipate that Biden's going to want to rock the boat um, and, and really shake things up that way. Uh, but he's certainly going to be more friendly towards uh, the Kurds uh, because they've proven themselves. Uh, we need them. We are closer uh, to their more progressive version of the Middle East, vision for the Middle East. Um, and Biden understands that. So uh, unlike Trump, who may have been tougher on Iran and, and tougher in some other ways against the adversaries of the United States, I don't think you're going to see Biden going on a Twitter rampage saying that the Kurds are potentially worse than ISIS. Uh, that's not going to happen.